Hi, I'm Michael Snell with Toys Digital, and this is a follow-up to my video about why Ubuntu 1804 should use KDE Plasma instead of GNOME. In this video, I'm going to address a few items I forgot to mention, correct a mistake from the previous video, as well as respond to viewer feedback. Let's talk about convergence. Convergence is a really awesome concept in general, and KDE has been working on this for a while. First up is KDE Connect. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail in this video because it deserves its own video, which I will be doing in the future. In the meantime, I wrote an article about KDE Connect for MakeUsub.com, which is currently displayed in the video. You can find a link to the article in the video description if you'd like to read it. For a brief overview, KDE Connect is a convergence bridge between your Linux desktop and your Android phone. KDE Connect allows you to receive Android notifications on your desktop, you can use it to send files back and forth between your phone and your computer. It provides a feature for clipboard synchronization which allows you to copy something on your desktop and have it immediately available on your phone and vice versa. You can use your phone's touch screen as a touchpad for your computer. There's even an option to use your phone as a remote control for your desktop's media players through KDE Connect. If that wasn't enough, you can wirelessly mount your phone's file system to your file manager to browse your phone's files on your desktop. So KDE Connect is a pretty awesome piece of software. If you don't get anything else from this video, you should certainly go check out KDE Connect. And before I move on, yes, this video is about KDE Plasma as a foundation for Unity, but I just wanted to make it clear that KDE Connect works on any desktop environment because it is DE agnostic. If a convergence bridge isn't enough to use Plasma as a foundation for Unity, maybe Plasma Mobile could help to convince Canonical. Plasma Mobile is a mobile experience utilizing KDE Plasma on top of Wayland. There's a fork of Ubuntu phone being made, but they'll need to solve the Mirror versus Wayland issue, whereas Plasma Mobile has already switched from their original Ubuntu phone base to now running on Wayland. KDE Plasma uses SVGs to render the interface of the desktop. SVG means Scalable Vector Graphics, which is an XML-based vector image format. The SVG is an open standard that can scale endlessly as well as be searched, indexed, scripted, and compressed. Since SVGs are XML files, they can be created and edited with a program like Inkscape or even a text editor. You can change the scaling settings in the display and monitor section of system settings. KDE Plasma supports 2x and 3 times scaling at the moment. Keep in mind, this is scaling to 4K on a 1080p screen, so it's going to be a bit funky. So why is this SVG thing important? It's important to note because since Plasma utilizes SVGs, suffice it to say, the entire UI is endlessly scalable regardless of the device. Of course, scalability doesn't mean it's automatically optimized, but it does lend itself to some very interesting opportunities. For example, thanks to this scalability, Plasma could be a platform for Ubuntu Phone, Unity, and even Ubuntu TV. You remember Ubuntu TV? I think that's everything that I forgot, so now let's talk about the mistake I made. Here's a clip of what I said. There is a weird overlap of the close button and the active windows icon. If this overlap issue was fixed, then this would be an awesome solution for both the Unity and GNOME features. And active window control already had that issue solved. If you go to the, win the widgets settings, right click the widget, choose settings, and scroll down, You'll see the option, show window icon. Just uncheck that, click OK, and problem solved. Yeah, my bad. The previous video became pretty popular with over 31,000 views at the time of this recording, which is awesome. It also received over 900 comments spread across YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, and Google+, which is also awesome. And I, I asked for feedback and you all totally delivered. I tried to reply to everyone who commented, but there were a few comments that seemed to keep popping up, so I wanted to take a little bit of time at the end of this follow-up video to address those comments. The first feedback I wanted to address is, Kubuntu is already a thing. Yes, Kubuntu is an Ubuntu-based distro that ships with KDE Plasma as a the desktop environment. However, Kubuntu ships Plasma with adult default settings for the interface. The suggestion I was making was not to ship Plasma in general, but to use Plasma as a foundation for continuing the Unity initiative. 
Kubuntu would still exist as an option for those who want default Plasma, whereas Ubuntu would have Unity built on top of Plasma. I think Unity is a really nice interface and has a lot of great ideas, especially the stuff for space saving, like the global menu, and of course the HUD is awesome. If Unity was built on Plasma, you get the best of both worlds with innovation and all the customizations and power of Plasma. Speaking of customizations, the next frequent comment was, Plasma has too many customizations and average users could actually end up breaking things. KDE Plasma is a very modular desktop environment, so much so that even system settings is completely modular. So Canonical can create their own system settings that is much more streamlined to what they want to offer. Typical users wouldn't have anything presented to them that could break things, but at the same time, power users would still have access to, to all of it if they wanted. Unity currently has a lot of options for customizations with the Unity Tweak tool, and I'm suggesting that you could just do something similar with KDE Plasma. Here's an example. Let's say you want to open the Task Switcher settings. You could go to System Settings, Window Management, Task Switcher, and make changes from here. Alternatively, since System Settings is modular, you could just open Task Switcher by itself. Another comment from people was something along the lines of, KDE is bloated. This is simply not true. This is said by a lot of people, and it is said quite often in all types of discussions, but it's just not true. Plasma is a flexible desktop environment, so if you have more resources to use, then it will try to use them to make everything feel smoother and more responsive. However, if you don't have a lot of resources, Plasma will adjust itself to use what is available. Keep in mind, Plasma's minimum requirement is only 512 megs of RAM for the whole system. Of course, the recommended amount of RAM is around 2 gigs, but the point is, it's not bloated. I realize this just sounds like I'm sharing my opinion versus facts because I don't have benchmarks to show right now. But I'm working on creating a video specifically for this topic to show that KDE Plasma is most certainly not bloated. I actually used to believe this as well until I tested myself. If you're interested in seeing the video where I provide benchmarks and such, be sure to subscribe. Next up, most features could be created easily in GNOME as well. It is true that most of these features I mentioned in the previous video could be created in GNOME as well. But my point was with GNOME, these would need to be created versus in Plasma, they are already created. Another issue is GNOME is kind of notorious for breaking compatibility with extensions, themes, and so on upon pretty much every release, and in some cases requiring massive rewrites due to removal of APIs that developers and designers were depending on. What's worse, they did so without any warning that it would happen. On the other hand, KDE cares deeply about backwards compatibility, so in many cases stuff made for KDE 4 will still work in Plasma 5, and the stuff that doesn't, there is a clear path for upgrading to the new frameworks. Basically, with GNOME, you can't guarantee your code will work after six months, whereas in Plasma, it's more like six years. This next point is very interesting. GNOME shares applications in common with Unity, so the transition will be less jarring for users. I understand the basis for this argument. However, I'd like to counter that with my own point of what is more jarring for users? Keeping the applications and changing the entire interface and user interaction, or keeping the interface and user interaction but changing the applications. I think it would be easier to replace the applications people use if their interface and interactions with that interface stay the same. But what do you think? Leave a comment below and let me know. How about Ubuntu gives the user the option to choose their desktop environment? I don't think this would work because many people who use Ubuntu proper use it because it's a set it and forget it type of distro. You just install it and get to work. I think presenting a choice for the desktop environment would be more jarring than switching to no more plasma. There are other distros that offer a choice, and if I were a new user to Linux presented with something like these, then I think I'd be totally lost since I wouldn't know what any of those options were. The last two most common responses were related to a specific customization I did with moving and resizing the panel to the left side of the screen. Some people were bothered by the clunkiness of the resizing, and others by the gap that I left at the top of the left panel. I understand why both of those would be bothersome, and I kind of agree to an extent because it's not very intuitive that you have to click and drag these buttons. However, other desktop environments panels can't be resized this easily, so you'll need to edit theme settings, configs, or something like G settings if you want to do that. If you keep that in mind, Plasma offers a config file for specific edits and is fairly easy to do. 
Open the Plasma Shell RC file located in your homes.config folder and make a few changes to set the exact settings you want. Keep in mind, this would already be done by Canonical prior to shipping the distro, so it wouldn't even really be an issue regarding my original suggestion. Finally, I just want to reiterate that this suggestion is not about which is better for the average user, GNOME versus KDE Plasma. It's also not about Plasma being chosen as the default DE for Ubuntu, but rather I want Canonical to use Plasma as a foundation to create a great, streamlined, well-polished, and ridiculously powerful Unity. I think Unity is heavily underrated for all the features it offers, and for me it's only lacking in customizations. If Unity's vision and user experience was combined with Plasma as the foundation, I think that would be totally awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to hear from you, so please leave a comment below, send me a tweet, or comment in our subreddit at r slash tuxdigital. If you haven't seen the previous video this is a follow-up to, then click this thumbnail. If you missed the latest episode of This Week in Linux, Tux Digital's weekly Linux news podcast, then click here to check that out. If you like what I do here on this channel, be sure to like this video and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and as always, keep using, learning, and enjoying Linux.